Welcome to worship. Whether you're here in person, whether you're on Zoom right now, alive with us, or whether you're watching later on YouTube, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Let us enter more deeply into worship as we listen to our prelude. Just a few announcements to bring to your attention. The congregational meeting is now set to take place on Sunday, May the 1st, and more information will be forthcoming as uh, we get closer to that date. I'm in the office Tuesday and Wednesday, 10 to 4 this week. Um, and I have yet to be told you can take off your masks, so glad to see you're all wearing your masks. The reopening committee will keep us posted. Easter flowers, if you um, haven't already ordered them, Wendy is here, or you can get in touch with her by phone or email. And there are offering envelopes specifically for Easter out in the Narthex, and I believe there's some at the Emily Street door as well, Julie. Okay. And Good Friday, this Friday, the 15th at 10.30, we're doing in-person and Zoom, so um, however you are comfortable coming. And as always, the YouTube channel is live. Bible study, we're meeting Wednesdays at 10 a.m. for our weekly study. This week we are doing the Easter Sunday readings, in case you need to know that. Lenten study, we are on Wednesday at 2.30. The information about what to read for that is in the bulletin. The sewing and crafting group, you're meeting tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. That's very early to be crafting, Heather. If 9.30. If you uh, haven't already gotten information and you'd like some more information, please, please speak to Heather Griffith. Fun script. Thank you for your orders, and if you haven't already received your cards, Julie is at the back of the church this morning for those here, and you can pick your cards up from her. And we raised almost $500 on our first order of the year. 
The takeout dinner. Thank you to everybody who has ordered. Marlene will be calling you about your pickup time. Back to Heather. <laughs> Heather is offering up her cottage again. It's a lovely spot. There's lots of wildlife to watch out on the lake and a lovely big deck if you want to spend some time outside and a dock and all sorts of things. So if you're interested in uh, doing that, Heather would be happy to arrange something with you. The Minute for Mission um, was in the bulletin. It's about the work we do in Afghanistan. Um, it doesn't tell you all the work because telling you all that detail actually puts some of our partners at risk. Um, kind of a scary idea that what we're doing is good stuff, but it puts the people doing it at risk if everybody knows about it. Um, so perhaps keep those folks in your prayers as well as in your M&S donations. And thank you for all those who continue to donate so that we can continue this ministry in whatever manner we are able, um, in whatever manner people are comfortable receiving worship and pastoral care and all of the other things that we do. And just as Jamie is switching pictures there, um, something that I got information on after the bulletin was out St. George's Anglican Church, just to the south of us, is closing. And they will be having a celebration on April the 23rd, which is the Saturday after Easter. Not this Saturday, the next Saturday. The 23rd at 1 p.m. And so everyone is invited to, to celebrate with them all the many years that they have been in our community. So should you be interested, um, put that on your calendar and I will make sure it gets in the bulletin as a reminder next week. And unless I've forgotten something, I think that's everything. So as we light our candle, we remember that we are entering into Holy Week. That week that starts with a wonderful, joyous occasion and slips into the deepest, darkest valley before we shine the light again. The flame of this light flickers, flickers in our hearts and minds. We're drawn into the celebrations of today and yet. We know what is to come. We know that soon this very flame will be put out, extinguished, and darkness will settle. But we also know that the light will come again, for Christ is the light of the world. This morning, let our response to the lighting of the candle be Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
couple of years, we haven't even been here for Palm Sunday, and I know you were all in your minds waving your palms. Please come up and get one to take home. Uh, before you go, I'll try to remember to take one vase with me to the door in case uh, you are more comfortable just picking it up on your way out. Um, but please, feel free to take them with you. However, we're going to hear Luke's version of this story, and he doesn't have any palm branches. For Luke, Jesus' journey to Jerusalem begins back in Galilee. And we read long before this chapter that when the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. He's gone through one town and village after another, teaching as he makes his way to Jerusalem. His journey is nearing an end. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near to Bethpathage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen. They were saying, Blessed is the King, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would shout out. The first Palm Sunday Parade. Let us join in our call to worship. We gather to celebrate. We join the crowd, waving our arms, shouting our joy. We gather to celebrate. We realize the Christ has come, humbling himself in many ways. We gather to celebrate. We want to be part of the knees that bow and tongues which confess. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We gather to celebrate that God is with us, even as we become part of crowds which do not truly recognize him. Let us pray together. God, we come in celebration joining the crowd that welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem all those years ago. May we find in this joyous time that which will carry us through the coming week. May this Palm Sunday strengthen us for the Holy Week to come. We shout Hosanna today. May we hold the hope of that word in the days to come. Amen. And our hymn before story time, He Came Riding on a Donkey.
Now I have a couple of things we need for story time. I have one of the palm branches to help waves, guys. And in the box, too bad I put just the right number in here. I have some stones. Now, if you were listening carefully a minute ago, the stones part is important. Bennett, do you want to come up and get stones for you and your brothers? Come on up and get them. Because I can't have you all up here, so. One for each of you. So in Luke's version of this story about Palm Sunday, he doesn't actually mention the branches. In other Gospels, we hear about them pulling the branches down off the tree and waving them, which is why we all like to have palm branches today. But Luke has a really interesting part of the story. So you each have a stone. Big people, I have extra stones if you want to try this later. Put the stone up to your ear. What do you hear? What do you hear? <laughs> do you hear anything? Does your stone say anything? Do anything? No. no? Hmm. What if you put it up to your ear and the stone... Jamie wants to try. I can see. <laughs> what if you put it up to your ear and it started to yell? What would you do? Probably throw it away, exactly. But that's what Jesus said. If the people stopped saying Hosanna, if the people said Hosanna, Hosanna. but if the people didn't, the stones would. Can you imagine walking down the street and having stones yelling at you? Even if they were saying Hosanna. Yes? yes? Okay. That's not really a street I want to walk on. Jesus coming into Jerusalem that day, what Jesus was going into Jerusalem to do was so important to God's creation that even the stones would yell if the people didn't. That tells us how important his trip to Jerusalem really was. And we know that some really nasty stuff is coming. But on this day, the people the stones, all of creation was excited to know that Jesus was coming. That Jesus was coming to be the Messiah. Nobody quite knew what it was going to look like. But on that day, even creation was shouting. So if all the people had stopped and been quiet, if all the people weren't shouting, Hosanna, the stones would have done it. That's quite the image. That's quite the thought. Uh-oh, I'm afraid one of the stones is starting to play music back there. I can hear it. <laughs> so you can take these stones home and listen. See if they ever tell you anything. Because they're part of God's creation, and they wanted everyone to know how important Jesus was. So take them home and remember how important Jesus was. And you can head out. You'll have to go down this way because we've got wires over here. If you go down this way and out this door, and Arlene's going to go out with you, and uh, we'll be sure to let you know when it's time for communion and you can come back in and join us. Keep your stone. That's right. Let him yell. If it gets loud back there, we'll know it's the stones. It said Hosanna? There you go. I've really missed that part of worship. <laughs> Writing them down or just telling them to, a, to a, a camera really hasn't been the same as having the kids there to respond. Our responsive psalm is selected verses from Psalm 118.
Let Israel now say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. Open to me the gates of the temple, that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. Through it the righteous shall enter. I thank you, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, O God, we pray. God, we pray, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. We bless you from the house of God. God, our God, has given us light. With palm branches in hand, let us march to the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Luke's version of the story continues. Jesus is now in Jerusalem. Passover is about to begin. Judas goes off to speak to the chief priests, and Jesus gives direction for where they are to eat the Passover meal together. Now the festival of the unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. And the chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and he conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray, to betray Jesus to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it together. They asked him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and they found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. Take a deep breath and look inside yourself. How do you feel hearing this part of the story? Darkness has entered Judas. Do you ever feel like Judas? Where do we feel that darkness? We turn to the book of the prophet Isaiah. And our passage is one of four servant songs found in Isaiah. And the first begins, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen. And in late Judaism, the servant was seen as the perfect Israelite, one of supreme holiness, a Messiah. And in the Gospels, Jesus identifies himself as the servant, the one who frees all the people. 
Listen to the words of the prophet. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Our hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Lenten journey has carried us to this day. We gather to celebrate that blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. During Lent, we've been on an inward journey that invited us to look more closely at our relationships with God, self, and others. Today seems like a celebration which ends our fasting, but let us not be deceived. There is more work to do. We dedicate ourselves to that work. We give. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, your blessings are beyond our understanding or imagining. Help us to not just count, but share our blessings with others. Empower us to offer ourselves completely to create the world you want for your people. Amen. On this Sunday, we start with the palms and we head into the passion. And so rather than preach, I like to share the story with you. 
Each of the gospel writers tells it slightly differently. So Luke has Jesus and his disciples gathered in a room on the second floor of a house in Jerusalem. All the preparations are as Jesus told them. So they're confident that what he now promises will really happen. So Jesus tries to prepare his disciples for their mission and for what is to come. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles round about with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me. And his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it would be who could do this. A dispute rose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom. And you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Jesus then said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. And he said, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. How do you feel as you sit at the table with Jesus? Do you understand what he's saying and doing? 
Do you understand how serious it is that he's still trying to teach at this late hour? Are you ready to say like Peter, I'll never betray you? Our communion hymn, Break Now the Bread of Life. Today, as we gather, <coughs> we do so some in one place and some in another, as we've been doing for the last couple of years. What we do when we celebrate communion is remember the very parts of the story of Jesus' passion that I just shared with us a moment ago. Jesus says that we're to remember him when we come to this table. Today, the table is many tables, and I trust that my blessing may reach out to each in the spirit that Jesus intended. For we do gather to remember, to celebrate his love for all humanity, and to be united in a meal as family. Communion brings us together in a very special way, even when today means being in different places. So come. All who wish to remember and to gather around the table to celebrate that because of the love shown by Jesus today, we are a family united in God's love. So I invite us to join in the prayer of great thanksgiving. God is with us. We are not alone. Christ is present here. The Spirit is among us. Let us give thanks to God in memory and in hope. God, you are with us, and to you we lift our hearts. We give you our thanks and praise. God of all creation, you are the one who brought all things into being. It was your breath, your spirit, which blew over the waters of the void and brought light, life, and love. Through your spirit, you give new life. Your covenants run down the ages, bringing promise, hope, healing, trust, and love. A rainbow with Noah, a promise to Abram and Sarai, a way to live together written on stone tablets, bronze serpent lifted, and your very law and love written in our hearts, all have come through your spirit and continue to echo in our hearts. Whenever we turn away from you, forget you, forget whose we are, you call us back and breathe love upon us. You do it again and again. In fullness of time, you sent Jesus, your chosen one, to be born to life like ours, born to be one of us. He came to teach us with words and actions, with his life and death, what your love is and how it can overcome all wrong, all loss, all brokenness. We celebrate this with all creation. 
Holy, holy, holy God, creator of all that is, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The night before Jesus died, he had supper with his closest friends. They were people just like us. He took bread, blessed, and broke it and gave it to each of them, asking that they eat it and remember him and his giving of his body to be broken for them. When they, when we, eat it, we are to remember him. After supper, he took a cup, and after blessing it, he shared the cup with each in the same way, saying it was his life's blood poured out for all, and that when they, when we, drink of it, we are to remember him. And so today we remember. We are united in the promises of Jesus. We are united as disciples. We are united through the bread in the cup. May our lives proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts gathered on many tables, that all who share the bread and cup may be the body of Christ, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. These and all our prayers for those near and far in need of your presence this day, we gather together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And on that night, Jesus said, this is my body broken for you, so that he might become the bread of life. And after supper, he took the cup and reminded the disciples that this was his love poured out for them to become the cup of blessing. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the cup of blessing. I invite us to pray together the prayer after communion. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by the life of Christ that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love 
and that your church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Our story continues. After supper, he came out, and as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came. And the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with our swords? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest, cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and he healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple court police, and the elders who had come with them, have you come with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter kept following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him. And she said, This man also was with him. But he denied it and said, women, I don't know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, I am not. Then an hour later, yet another kept insisting, surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him in to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them ask, Are you then the Son of God? Jesus said to them, 
you say that I am. Then they said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Where do you find yourself in the story? Can you relate to Jesus and his desire to avoid suffering? Can you relate to those disciples who fell asleep? Can you relate to Peter? Trying to be strong and not succeeding. Jesus is alone. How do you feel? Our closing hymn, My Song is Love Unknown. The wind is changing. I invite you to come Good Friday to hear the rest of the story, and then to return again on Easter morning. And now, as we go from this time of worship, we remember Jesus welcomed in joy. We remember Jesus alone and anguished. We remember Jesus rejected and abused. We remember that in only a few days, everything can change. Amen. invite those who are online with us to unmute your microphones so that we, the people, may together say, may we walk with Christ this day.